England's Ashes Tour is well underway as they began with a tidy two-day draw with a Western Australia 11, but Andrew Strauss is keen to swiftly receive clarity and closure on the Ben Stokes situation, which remains beyond their control. The situation in a word is complicated, Strauss, the director of cricket, told BBC Radio 5 Live Sports Week. There's two different potential disciplinary procedures he has to go through, one is the ECB's own internal one and the other is any potential police action. Until we know more from the police it's very hard for us to put a timeline on anything. What we all want is clarity on what that situation is and how much cricket he will be missing for England. We're keen to get into that and move this forward but we're in the hands of the police. Playing cricket over the weekend has helped England's squad to move on from the Stoke situation. By this game's end, Wa 11 batsmen having a second hit and, in Aaron Hardy's case, a second dismissal, it was little more than middle practice, but after England's unestablished batsmen shared runs out on Saturday, Jimmy Anderson, who got better with each spell and ended with 4 for 27 and 13 overs, led a bowling performance that improved markedly in the course of a sweltering Sunday at the WACA. After a slippery first session with two drops, the catches started to stick, too. Anderson felt England went through the gears neatly. He was superb, as was Jake Ball, which rather muddies the picture with regard to replacing Stokes because Craig Overton, who picked up two wickets but was expensive, had appeared to be in pole position. Josh Philippe, a 20-year-old who has played for Durham's seconds while playing club cricket in Newcastle, had given England a mighty fright in the morning session, which brought just one wicket and 124 runs in 25 overs, as the seamers lacked both line and length. Philippe feasted, especially on the drive, until his greed saw him stumped in the over after lunch for 88 trying to hit Mason Crane over the top for a second time. Philippe, who does not normally open the batting, had been dropped on 72, one-handed by Johnny Bairstow diving to his left as the ball shot off the face of the bat as he tried to leave a ball from Chris Wokes and the cordon, which contains David Malin a third slip, suggesting he will play in Brisbane, also gave Jake Carter a reprieve. He put on 80 with Philippe but was shelled by Root at second slip off the excellent ball. Overton eventually made Carter England's first wicket of the tour, a hook toe pedged straight to fine leg. England's fielding was excellent thereafter. I think you could probably see from the first session we were rusty, that was pretty obvious, Anderson said. We didn't get it right at all. We've got two first-class games coming up that we want to be fit for, and get those cobwebs out. Ball and Crane appeared 15 minutes before lunch and sparked the improvement by providing the day's second and third maidens at a time when Stuart Broad and Overton were costing six and over and Wilkes was barely better. Ball immediately located his length but Overton bowled too full. Crane, meanwhile, was encouraging, holding his nerve to pick up a second wicket, Tim David, as he looked for a fourth straight boundary. I thought we gradually got there in the end, Anderson said. It was a very flat pitch. And it's very different to English lengths here, so you can't be as full, and I thought they played pretty well, and put pressure on us. But once we got into the day, and got our fields right, we bowled pretty well, and reverse S-wing came into the game later in the afternoon. The dependables, Alistair Cook and Joe Root, had failed with the bat, and Broad was slow to get going too, but a spell with a new ball earned him a wicket, Hardy's second departure, caught at second slip. That spell at 5 or 5.30 in the afternoon can be just as crucial as the one's first thing in the morning, said Anderson. Anderson, though, bowled beautifully. He got the old ball reversing in the afternoon, picking up Nick Hobson and Will Bozisto another to bat twice in three balls of a five-over spell that cost nine, while his third trundle, three overs long just before the new ball, did not concede a run. Again he picked up two quick wickets, with Clint Hincliffe, who played well for 75 caught at cover and Nathan Coulter Nile bottom edging a cut to Bairstow. England women prepare for Ashes Test with draw against Cricket Australia 11 England women prepared for next week's Ashes Test by drawing with a Cricket Australia 11 in Sydney. Heather Knight's side, who need to avoid defeat in the one-off four-day game to have any chance of regaining the Ashes, were unable to bowl their hosts out on the final day, with the CA-11 finishing on 182 for 7, chasing 266 to win. England had resumed on 87 for 3 and spent some useful time in the middle, with Sarah Taylor finding form with an unbeaten 85.
Natalie Skyver 42, Fran Wilson 45 and Catherine Brown 43 no were also in the runs as Knight called her side in on 305 for 7. There may have been some concern that their hosts would chase down an unlikely target as they raced to 127 for 2 off 30 overs, thanks to Nicola Carey's 52 and 40 from Heather Graham, but 5 wickets in 8 overs swung the game in England's favour. Knight was the main destroyer as she took 3 for 12 from 3 overs, with spinner Laura Marsh finishing with 2 for 44 as England ran out of time.